Hello, I'm Katie Sullivan and I'm the front desk employee here at Skyway Inn. And um, our manager just came up and talked to me a minute ago and said that you're new here and you had some questions about some of our pricing choices and our business choices for this week. And so I just like to have um, the opportunity to explain those to you real quickly, um, if that's fine with you. Perfect. All right. So first off, let me just say um, it's really nice to meet you. And I'm so glad that you're curious and you have questions. You can always come to us because our business loves to be able to educate people, especially feed into who our staff is. And so um, I just want to go ahead and jump right in. So first of all, I want to just explain what we typically do here because you're new. So typically we ask that our customers pay $199 a night plus tax to stay here. And one thing our hotel follows closely is um, the hub of the city. So because we're located so closely to a city where there's lots of events, we always make sure we keep our eye on what the events are, when they are, and what they're going to require as far as um, people needing a place to stay. And so that kind of feeds into the supply and the demand um, because of those big city events. So the first thing I kind of want to talk to you about is what the principles of supply and demand are. So demand typically will go up when supply goes down and vice versa. When supply goes up, demand will go down. And so demand is the need or the, the desire customers have for a product. Supply is the availability of that product to get to customers. And so um, this is typically an inverse relationship. So when one goes up, the other goes down. And so in business, you try and find a good balance between the two so you don't have a surplus of supply or a deficit and you also want to make sure that you have enough demand that that product is popular but not too little that that product is just sitting and so there's getting ready to be a three-day music festival that's coming to town and over the past couple years that we've noticed how popular this music festival is typically hotels in the area will have an 100 percent occupancy rate which means every single room in that hotel is filled and there's quite a few around here actually and so um there's getting ready to be a big flow of people that are going to come in and people love coming to this festival and are typically willing to pay more for a place to stay than they would if they were just vacationing somewhere. So instead of just being typical people who are coming to an area where they could find, you know, a hotel, maybe a city away or maybe a couple blocks away, they're wanting to be right in the center of this so that they can get good tickets and get good seats and just get started early in the morning. And so um, the demand is getting ready to be really, really big for um, these rooms that people are needing to be able to stay in. So the demand that we have is for hotel rooms and we can supply it because our supply is the hotel rooms and as well as what our competition has. So not just ours, but as well as all the uh, available rooms around. So this leads me into the concept of competition. So the concept of competition is basically that there's going to be more than one of, of a place that customers can go to get a certain good or service. In our case, it's hotel rooms. And because of this, we wanna make sure that we're the best at giving them that as well as making a profit. That's basically the concept of competition. So we aren't the only ones around with the supply of rooms. There's plenty of other inns and hotels right around us. Our goal is to make the most business while still making a profit. So to maintain this, we have to focus on our pricing. And the function of pricing in marketing is a very, very important concept um, because the function of price basically establishes the value of a good or service. It monitor, We monitor that pricing based on the supply and demand of a product or a good or a service. And it's essentially a tool that we can use to be better than our comp competitors and make more money at the end of the day. So an example would be, um, a high-end burger place versus a McDonald's. So going back to that um, example that I had earlier of just saying that we're not the only person who can supply this, to in make sure that our value is known, which once again is one of those functions of pricing, is that you can use the psychological pricing of an object to actually increase or decrease its value. For example, you go out to lunch at a, maybe a higher end restaurant and you order a burger that's maybe placed at $12, $13 versus going to a McDonald's where you can get the Happy Meal or you can get a burger for a couple of bucks, right? There's a difference in the two. One, you expect to have a higher quality and have a higher value. And one, you expect to have a lower quality and a lower value. So because of that, it kind of just um, can determine the value. And that's actually psychological pricing, that things that are priced higher typically in our minds um, will basically correlate with um, us assigning more value to that product. 
And so then the supply and demand, once again, is that we have our um, supply of rooms and the demand is going way up. So that's just kind of that part about how we monitor supply and demand to actually determine what our pricing will be for our service, which is hotel rooms. Um, and so then there's the competition, which is essentially that our competitors um, will also be expecting lots of people to come in. So we want to find a good balance with our pricing in this. So we don't want to overprice things so that customers are going to be driven away and go and look at all the other hotels and inns in the area before coming to us. But we also don't want it low enough that we're not making a profit. So because of this, we need to match the desire for hotel rooms with a reasonable price that's not too much over and not too much under. So this is a tool against our competition because um, customers will look to the lowest price first, typically, as long as the value is good. They'll look to the lowest price possible because they're already spending money on this music festival. However, a lot of these people are um, coming back after years and some of them are brand new. And so they're willing to pay higher for those hotel rooms. So our hotel um, has changed our pricing. We've actually increased it to $499 a night plus tax. And there's other restaurants around, or other, excuse me, hotels around the area that have placed theirs at about $700. So that's too high because customers are going to come to us first and we wanna remain middle of the pack, not the lowest because we wanna make a good profit, but not the highest because we don't wanna scare customers to every other business before ours. So customers are going to book us first because we're right in the middle, which means once again, in their minds resonates with value and also make sure that they um, will come to us over some of those more higher, more expensive hotels. On the flip side, it's also smart to raise our profits to make or to raise our prices to make more of a profit. So raising our profits prices, excuse me, makes sense because people are willing to pay more once again, because this is a music festival that comes around once a year that people love and they enjoy. Number two, it takes advantage of the situation and it gives us more of a profit. It's not smart to keep our prices the same actually because, because people are willing to pay more and keeping it the same price wouldn't benefit us at all. It would actually do the opposite. There would be no potential growth of our profit and it's actually just bad business. So this leads me into the factors that are affecting a business's profit. So supply. Once again, I've touched on supply, which is basically just our hotel rooms that we have available. And the demand is the desire that people have to get those hotel rooms. The next one that feeds into that is expenses. So an example of that would be like our labor. So our staff, our employees that we have to pay, our facilities. We have to make sure that we keep our hotel in good shape. We have to make sure we have food and we have water and all of these different toiletries for our guests to stay and bedding. So that would be expenses, which falls under those um, factors. And then lastly would be the value. So those would kind of fall under good reviews um, or bad reviews, actually. So a lot of the times reviews are helpful or they can make or break your business. And so we currently have good reviews, which is good for our business. So you're probably wondering what this has to do with our decision to raise our prices, because once again, just throwing a lot at you here, here's how to connect it back more labor so we're going to need more labor because we're having more people coming in we're going to need more kitchen staff so that people can get their food fast we're going to need more people that are going to be in housekeeping to take care of bedding needs we're going to need more maids we're going to need more people at the front desk more people helping stuff come in we're going to need all of that we're needing during this time more because of that we actually need to raise our profit our price so that we can make more of a profit to pay for those expenses Second, we have more people, which means more reviews. So this falls under the value. With more people comes more reviews. And if they have a good experience, those will be good reviews. So um, our value will go up based on positive reviews that we receive. And because our hotel in the past has a really good track record of those, our value keeps increasing every year because people have a desire to want to be at our hotel specifically. And also customers may come for years if we have... Um, if we're good and so our prices may raise in the future and they might be more likely to come to our hotel specifically because they've had a good experience here. So I just threw a lot at you. I just wanna give you a quick overview. Basically, the essential part of this is that more people coming into this area equals more of a demand for rooms, which gives us more business. And when we have more business, we can make more of a profit by raising our prices. All right, thank you so much for talking to me today. I'm so glad that you have lots of questions. You can always come to me if you need anything else. I'm at the front desk 24 seven, uh, and I hope that you have a great and wonderful day. Thank you.